Hi, this is Baiju Vasudev and welcome to my channel Hi by Me Maths. Today we are going to start chapter 4 binomial expansion. This chapter consists of 5 subtopics. The subtopic 4.1 is Pascal's triangle. I'm going to skip 4.1. There are two reasons. Number one, if you go through past papers, there wasn't even a single question taken from this topic. It's not that important. And number two, I want you to learn the main thing from this chapter first. Then maybe at the end, we will go back to topic one and we will learn the Pascal triangle. Topic 4.2 is factorial notation. So before you learn the binomial expansion, there are little things you need to be aware of. The first one is factorial notation. What is a factorial? If you take a positive integer, it has to be a positive integer, let's say 5, you put this exclamation mark, this is called 5 factorial and, uh, and how it's defined is, it's a multiplication of all integers less than 5, including 5 ones, 2 times 1, that's what 5 factorial is. So if it is 10 factorial, it's 10 times, 9 times, 8 times, etc, etc, till all the way till 1. You need to multiply all the numbers. So you can find the value by multiplying all the numbers. In some textbook, they use this symbol for notation. But in our P2 textbook, the notation they have used this exclamation mark. So I would suggest you to use this. 5 factorial, this is up. So if it is 2 factorial, it's 2 times 1, it's 2. 1 factorial, it's 1. Surprisingly, 0 factorial is also 1. So if you ask me why, I'm not going to go deep into this concept. You don't need that actually. You just need the result. So if you really want to know why 0 factorial is 1, there are a lot of videos out there explaining why it's 1. Now you don't need to worry about it. Just remember this result. 0 factorial is 1. 1 factorial is 1, 2 factorial is 2, 3 factorial will be 3 times 2 times 1, 6. So you can calculate. Even in your calculator, you can see this notation, x factorial. So you put the number, you press this button, usually you need to use shift and some button. Uh, the factorial exclamation mark will appear, you press equal, it will generate the value. Now there is one more thing you need to learn. This 5 factorial you can even write it as 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 is 4 factorial, right? So you can write it as 5 times 4 factorial. It's a set. So if you take any number, let's say 10 factorial, you can write it as 10 times 9 factorial. Because 9 factorial consists of all the numbers 9 and less than 9. Or, in fact, you want to write it as 10 times 9. This 9 factorial, you can write it as 8 factorial. It's the same thing. You need to know all these things. Now, I want you to pick up your calculator and find the value of 100 factorial divided by 98 factorial. Use your calculator and try to find the value of this. If you are using the normal scientific calculator, you are going to get a math error here. Because your calculator is trying to find the value of the numerator and then divide the value of the divided by the value of the denominator. But 100 factorial is so huge. It's like some number times 10 to the power 150 or something. It's so huge due to the limitations of your calculator display or calculator algorithm. It's going to show you math error. But we can do it manually without the calculator. You can write it as the 100 factorial is same as 100 times 99 times 98 factorial. Same like writing 10 factorial in this form. 98 factorial includes all the numbers less than 90. And you have 98 factorial here. So if you cancel this, because they are same, 99 times 100 is 9900. So you see, we can do it manually, but if you use calculator, you can't find this value. So whenever you have some factorials, 
you can just do it manually and calculate it. Uh, or if it's a smaller number, just use your calculator. So it's the same thing for n factorial. If it is n factorial, you can write it as n times n minus 1 factorial. If you don't understand this, it's the same like writing 100 factorial as 100 times 99 factorial. It's the same thing. So you can write n factorial as n times n minus 1 factorial or even you can write it as n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 factorial. So that's one of the results you need to remember. Now that we have learned the factorial notation, there is one more thing you need to learn before moving on to binomial expansion. It's called combination. So I will explain this uh, combination now. Let's say you have four objects a, B, C, labeled as A, B, C. So I want you to form a group of two objects, the, all the combinations of group of two objects. So I want you to take two objects from here and form a group and how many number of possible ways you can do that. You can take, think about it a minute, you can take A, B or A, C or A, B. The order doesn't matter. So AB is same as BA. So and then you can take BC, BD. Or you can take C. Is there any other possible combination? That's all. Nothing, right? So from four objects, if you want to take two, two objects, there are total of six possible combinations you can form. This is what combination is. But when it comes to bigger numbers, it is highly impossible to write out all the combinations. That's where the combination formula comes in. So if you are in your calculator, if you look at this button, NCR, that will help you to find all the possible combinations. So you just need to type 4 and press this button as C will appear. Put 2 equals, you will get 6. So this is called combination. Here, the order of the combination doesn't matter. But if it matters, there is something called permutation, NPR, which is not in our syllabus. Don't worry about it now, NPR. What we are learning is only NCR, where the order doesn't matter. So AB is same as BA. So this is what combination is. So here, first I will teach you the notation clearly. The notation is this NCR. Usually you need to put as small as a number, a little bigger C and another number usually which is smaller than or equal to this number 4C3, 4C2, something like that. Sometimes they use this long bracket and they put 4 and C, 4 and 3. This is also NCR, 4, uh, 4C3 or 4C3. These two are the notation. Sometime in your textbook, you might have noticed that they use this notation. You are allowed to use that. But what you're not supposed to do, do not do this place. Looks like C cube and all. Don't do that. Or don't do this also. Okay. Because you need to put a little bigger C just to differentiate that it's not a variable or anything. The C denotes the combination. So these two are the proper notation. So here in this NCR, instead of using your calculator, there is a formula so you can apply it and find it manually. The formula is NCR is n factorial over r factorial times n minus r factorial. That's the formula. So let's say you want to find 5C3. It's 5 factorial over R factorial. R is this 3. 3 factorial times N minus R. Here 5 minus 3 factorial. 2 factorial. And then simplify it. 5, fa 5 factorial is 5 times 4 times 3 factorial. Divided by 3 factorial times 2 factorial. Why I have written 5 in this form? So that I can cancel this. So 5 times 4 is 20. 2 factorial is 2. 
you get 10. That means from 5 objects, there are 10 possible combinations of 3 objects you can form. So here, there are few results you need to remember. If you use your calculator and find out what is 5C5, you will get 1. 5C1, you will get 5. Use your calculator and double check these values. So this gives us a result. NCN is 1. NC1 is N. And then use your calculator and find out what is 8C3 or 8C5. Use your calculator and check these two values. You will get the same value. Because this 5 plus 3 is 8. That gives a result. NCR is same as NCN minus R. Or in other words, 8C3 is same as 8C8 minus 3. These two values are same. So you need to remember these three results. Take note of them, please. So I'm taking few questions from exercise 4B. If you look at exercise 4B, the first few questions are not important. You can go through on your own. So I'm taking this question number 9. They want you to show that NC1 equals N. We need to use the formula for NCR. The formula is NCR is N factorial over R factorial times N minus R factorial. That's the formula. Replace R by 1 here. So NC1 will be N factorial over 1 factorial R is 1 times N minus 1 factorial. That's it, we just need to simplify it. I'm going to write the n factorial as n times n minus 1 factorial. It's same like writing 100 factorial as 100 times 99 factorial. 1 factorial is 1, leave it. And you have n minus 1 factorial. Cancel this. You got the value of n already. We have proved this already. And see what is n. It's the same thing for the second question also. And see to use the formula n factorial over 2 factorial times n minus 2 factorial. I'm going to rewrite this n factorial as n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 factorial. It's same like writing 100 factorial as 100 times 99, which is 100 minus 1, times 98, which is 100 minus 2 factorial. 2 factorial, the value of 2 factorial, use your calculator, just 2 times 1 is 2, times n minus 2 factorial. Cancel this, you got the answer already. That's it. Here in this question, they want you to find the value of a here. Take it as n, c, r. The formula for NCR is, this is another notation for combination, it's up to you which one you want to use. N factorial over R factorial times N minus R factorial. That's a formula. If we compare these two, you have 50 in the place of N, 13 in the place of R. So this will be N factorial over R factorial times N minus R factorial is 8. What is n minus r? So a will be 50 minus 13, 37. Just compare these two, you can straight away find the value of a. Here also the same thing. n factorial over r factorial times n minus r factorial. You see, you have 18 in the place of n minus r. n is 35. Put 35 here, you can find r. So R is 70 because 35 minus 18 is 70. That's it. 